Welcome to a brief presentation on how to integrate quotes into your research paper. Please note that we'll be covering how to format citations in another video, so we won't be discussing those here. Here are five basic steps to using quotes like a professional to back up your research with outside sources. First, choose quotes that help strengthen your argument. Next, cut out everything in the quote but the core concept. Introduce your readers to the quote, and then give your quote some context. Finally, edit around your quote for maximum smoothness. Let's take a closer look at each of these steps in detail. First of all, make sure you're choosing the right quote for the situation. In general, you'll want to pick quotes that are going to back up your thesis. To see what I mean, let's take a look at this example. I'm writing a paper on the health benefits of cat ownership. Which of these quotes will back up my thesis the best? Number one, nearly 40 million households in the United States have pet cats. Number two, cats can provide emotional support, improve moods, and contribute to the overall morale of their owners. Number three, cats can carry harmful germs that can cause a variety of illnesses in people, ranging from minor skin infections to serious illnesses. So, which of these three quotes backs up my thesis the best? If you said two, you're correct. Number two does the best job of supporting my argument about the health benefits of cat ownership primarily because it talks about several ways in which cats benefit owners. Keep in mind, however, that these other quotes may still be useful elsewhere in my paper. One may provide helpful background information in my introduction, while three might be useful in a paragraph on counterarguments. Using counterarguments is an advanced essay writing technique where a writer brings up common arguments against their thesis and then spends some time breaking down each of those arguments and proving why they might be weak. In this case, I could bring up the illnesses that cats can cause, and either discuss ways to avoid those illnesses, or talk about how the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Regardless of what you do, make sure every paragraph supports your overall thesis in some way. Alright, so we've chosen the research we want to include in our paper, and now it's time to quote it. Sometimes, this chunk of information can be a paragraph or longer. You could toss the whole thing into your paper as a block quote, this usually isn't recommended because it looks like you're relying on someone else's words to make your argument for you, and your teachers definitely know when you're trying to bump up the word count. Instead, find the heart of the quote, the most important piece, and slice off all the words on either side of it. So let's take this example. Our original quote says, Research has shown that cats can provide emotional support, improve moods, and contribute to the overall morale of their owners. Cats are also credited with promoting socialization among older individuals and physically or mentally disabled people. Nearly 40 million households in the United States have pet cats. That's a lot. How long did it take for you to zone out while I was reading that? Okay, so let's trim it. That last sentence doesn't really fit in with the rest of our quote, so let's cut it out altogether. Second sentence is pretty unwieldy too. We can summarize that in a couple of words. First six words and the last three words of the first sentence are unnecessary for the overall meaning. Let's ax those two. So the heart of that first quote is now in bold. Provide emotional support, improve moods, and contribute to the overall morale. That's the core piece of information I want to quote to back up my thesis. Everything else I'm going to remove or I'm going to summarize it, as featured in the trimmed example. Much cleaner with the added bonus that more of the text is in my own words. Notice what I've done at the beginning here, which is to introduce the author of this quote. That is step three. You don't want to drop your quote into the middle of a paragraph without warning. It's as though your readers have been politely listening to you speak on the stage, and then suddenly a complete stranger interrupts with their own opinion, and you just let them. It's kind of rude. Instead, the polite thing to do is introduce your visiting experts to your audience. Doesn't have to be a detailed biography with all of their credentials, but do signal that you're transitioning to another speaker or outside piece of information. For example, you might preface your quote with something like, according to one study, or this is evident in the work of so-and-so who claims that, or even as researchers at the Institute of Whatever discuss in their article. These are just a few examples, so feel free to get creative. Now that we've introduced our guest speaker, we don't want to let them have their mic drop moment and then carry on with our speech without further comment. We need to give them some appreciation and maybe some context. A general rule of thumb is to use twice as much space explaining the quote as the quote itself takes up. 
I personally find this rule to be a little bit strict, because some essay writers see that, and they just rephrase every single one of their quotes after they quote it, and that ends up sounding really redundant. So instead, I like to add a context cushion with some of my own commentary or a brief discussion about the information that the quote presents. Okay, so let's say our quote is that 70% of librarians are cat people. If we toss this into our paper and just move straight on to our next point, we get a bit of whiplash. So first, let's add our introduction. Recent made-up studies have shown that 70% of librarians are cat people. Great, introduce a study. Now let's add another sentence afterwards to talk about that study. Personally, one of my favorite words in essay writing is perhaps. This lets me theorize about maybe why this statistic is the way it is, but it also leaves some wiggle room for me to step back and say, well, I could be wrong. So my next sentence here is, this high number is, perhaps, due to the solitary nature of both librarians and cats, or the symbiotic relationship between cats, warm stationary laps, and good books. So I've included my outside quote, but I've also added some of my own observations and insights about it. I did not count the words on this to make sure my explanation was twice as long as my quote, but I feel pretty comfortable moving on to my next point without leaving readers wondering why I included it at all. Ultimately, you'll want to include enough context to make sure you tie your quote into the current paragraph, as well as help strengthen your overall thesis. The final piece of integrating quotes into your paper is to edit for flow. You're allowed to make some minor changes to the text of the quote as long as you don't change the author's meaning and you make it obvious which parts you have changed. You can use square brackets to correct capitalization or change past tense to present tense in order to make the sentence look and sound smoother. In this example, a quote which originally began with a capital letter has been lowercased because it now falls in the middle of a sentence. We want to make sure things are grammatically correct and also that they agree with the rest of the sentence. You can use an ellipsis to remove portions of a quote. So in this quote, for example, I put an ellipsis to indicate that I've cut out maybe a word or an entire phrase. Remember step two? Trim the fluff that you don't need and stick with the core of the quote. Finally, the most important step, read the whole paper to yourself out loud if you can. If it doesn't sound natural when you hear it, it's not going to sound natural to your audience when they're reading it. Edit as needed, and then read it out loud again. Repeat until your sentences flow as smoothly as a well-researched lullaby. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like some more tips on writing and citing papers, check out our library guide on citations, or visit the Saracosa Library website. We hope to see you soon.